Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm going to be taking my first look at one of the upcoming new chipset boards and sorry, I'm going to say it, it's the Asus Z97A. Now in case you didn't know, uh, Intel are up, uh, dating the chipset. Uh, there are going to be several new features and stuff and I do have to kind of go careful within, within you know, certain parameters about the things that I'm allowed to say. Asus are telling us that we can talk about everything. Asus are also telling us that they want us to go live with all of our reviews early. I'm going to be doing some previews and trying to skirt within uh, what Intel would be saying the uh, NDAs are and stuff. But anyway, um, I will be doing um, a lot more on you know other boards and stuff going forward. And you may think it's kind of different. I'm starting with what's pretty much going to be Asus's cheapest board on the market, the Z97A. Um, but the thing is, is, I wanted to start off at the beginning because they've had, obviously had a long time to get stuff right. Now, I, I'm not going to be able to show you any of the stuff in the BIOS and stuff because I'm still a bit wary about what I'm allowed to show you and what I'm not allowed to show you. I certainly don't want to be uh, annoying Intel, but Asus have spent a long time on... Uh, getting all the little bits and bobs right. So we're going to start with a cheap board so that you can see if this is the basic one, this is their cheap one, you can pretty much expect the stuff that you know goes on from that point to be quite good or you know better, should I say. Um, so, right. Uh, another thing that I will say, if you're wondering, um, I've not got any of the studio lights on at the moment. I'm not near a window. I'm just at the other end of the office where I always am and I'm just testing the camera's ability to run without the, the uh, bright lights because the flickering is being caused by the LED lights that I run in the office. Uh, the studio lights are alright but then uh, the camera spazzes out at how bright everything is and I've still not got to um, the time to start going through all the manual tests and stuff yet. But anyway, having a look at the box. So when we flick it round, there is a wealth of information on the back. Uh, and this should focus pretty damn well. That's obviously the board that we're going to be looking at in a minute. We've got down the bottom, I'm not going to say anything about it, but that's your um, CPU and chipset specs and stuff like that. And what I meant by Asus has spent a long time on all the other stuff is uh, Asus are really shouting about the amount of time that they've spent on their BIOS, on their Remote Go software, the Turbo app, Crystal Sound 2, Turbo LAN. Um, it's just that all the little tiny little bits and bobs, they've just sat there and polished it. So they've taken a, what I would say was you know a, a pretty good product line in the first place and they've just been adding extra, extra polish, getting all the little things right. And I'm hearing amazing things about the BIOS and fan profiles and the stuff that you can do with crystal sound and the overclocking. So it's the, the, there's a lot of the, the right things being said to me for me to actually go, wow, actually, I'm quite looking forward to having a play with this. Now, obviously, I will be doing a full review, but we're just here today to take a look at the board itself. So I'm going to move the box out of the way and we'll have a look. Now, the thing that strikes me to start off with is we kicked off a lot recently about the gold. Now obviously gold is a massive colour in the Asian market. It's an immersion market, it's, you know, it, that is the reason why the gold is there, it's because they're trying to expand the sales of the lower price point stuff into places like China and India and stuff like that. So the, the emerging markets will say with bunny ears. Um, but for a lot of us, uh, the gold colour doesn't really translate well into the UK, Europe, uh, like the main parts of Europe, I will say, um, and the States. And it's just something that a lot of us have kind of like turned our nose up at. Uh, for me personally, this time round, the gold is a lot less offensive. Um, and by that, I mean it's not a str as strong a colour. They've toned it down a fair bit. It's still not something that is going to make me kind of make my jaw drop and is telling me, oh my God, I must have it. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, I'm not sure why, but the, the heat sink on this this time, uh, this round kind of style, it's making me think 
uh, like I'm sure there was a media centre board at some point a few years ago had something like this but it's also for some strange reason making me think Sabretooth the original X58 Sabretooth I can't explain why it's just the first time I saw it I was like ooh but the heat sinks they're not just gold and my own my other problem with the 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 you know the the other gold boards was they looked like a bit of a throwback they looked like uh, motherboard heat sinks from four or five years ago just made gold and just chucked on at least this time we've got gold and black there's a it's a it's much more of an optically pleasing design um, we've got the double set of heat sinks as well which is all also a nice touch because Still, if you've been in this um, industry for a little while or you've been uh, a gamer or a purchaser or an enthusiast for more than kind of six months um, and you actually understand what a Sega Mega Drive is, that type of kind of age person, back in the day, if you had a heat sink along the top of your board, that meant you were doing quite well for yourself and that meant that you, you had extra overclocking available. Now, obviously, the more chokes and stuff around means more power going into the CPU. I don't know how many um, extra MOSFETs we've got around the top. But the fact that it's there, it just makes it look nicer. I think it makes them look more balanced as well. So the heat sinks, you know, two color, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, I'm definitely loving the fact that I've not got any lights on and my camera is still sapping up this. And I think it's looking quite clear, but I would very much like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, before we start going on to features, we're going to stick with aesthetics. And people are already have going to have noticed, because I've got it on a black background, is that there is a slight brown tinge to the board. Now, if you have a look there, the reason why I'm kind of moving it around and stuff, you can see that the board is black, but the brown is because you are seeing some of the copper underneath. So it's just the fact that it's not been layered up so much. Now, they do have to, um, you know, if they're going to, the board's going to cost less then extra coatings and you know not being as anal with how black we want stuff is one of the places that they're going to um, save a bit of money. So the, the thing is though is I'm going to be perfectly honest about this because I know there's probably people that have already before even getting to this point in the video have already posted a comment and are moaning. Now the thing is the people that generally moan about the brown would never have even wanted to have bought this board in the first place. They're just bitching and moaning because they've got nothing better to do. Um, uh, and to be fair, if you're looking at something like the Z87A, you, you, you're not going to be buying this board because it is a supermodel. You're not going to be buying this board because you know you want to go to uh, an amazing nightclub drinking Cristal champagne with this motherboard on your arm. It's just not going to be like that. You're going to be getting it because it's going to be a workhorse. You may not even have a window in your case or you just may not care enough that once it's inside your dark case, you're not going to know it's bloody brown in the first place. So it depends on you know the actual reason why you want it. And considering that I'm expecting this board to be incredibly cheap, around the £100 mark, hopefully a bit less. Obviously, I can't, it's all speculation at the moment because we're, we've not even, the boards have not even been released to the public. So it is all speculation. But if it's going to come in that cheap, with the stuff that we're going to talk about in a minute, I don't particularly see it being too much of a problem because as I said, once it's in your board and it's, uh, sorry, in your case and it's all dark in there and it's just, you've got your graphics card over the top and your memory and your heat sink and stuff, again, you're not going to really see enough of it to really give a monkeys. So the reason why I'm holding it here at the moment is obviously you can see the gold, gold, gold. Everything else that's on there is black and grey. It's very understated. I like all the slots like that. Um, it's not trying to grab your attention. It's just a, a nice, uh, I'm going to say simple, but not in a bad way, simple b board with a nice understated design. But also, quite surprisingly there, we have a PCI slot, which kind of legacy, it does lean towards the point of, uh, we know, you know, it's the lower end of the market, people may still have a PCI slot. Why we would want a PCI slot directly underneath uh, the main PCI Express, I don't know. I think that one and that one should probably have been spun around, but there is another one further down here. Talking about the slots, we can see that there's a PCI Express 1 at the top. Now, with some of the Asus boards of old, this would be where you put your sound card, but we've obviously got the dedicated uh, Crystal Sound 2 down here. But the fact that the, the top 
PCR Express 16 isn't at the top of the board, it's one slot down, this will be one of the boards that the Noctua NHD15 will fit in fine because we've got that extra bit of real estate. And that was what I was talking about when I reviewed the D15 uh, previously. So yeah, Noctua NHD15, the new one, will fit in this fine. So there we go, boys and girls. We found one of the boards that it'll work on. So the crystal sound, we've got Japanese capacitors down at the bottom for this. But if you can see this little trail around, if you spin it round, you can see it a bit easier. And essentially, that's like a separate bit of PCB. A bit like with some of the uh, more expensive boards like the Hero and stuff, there'll be lights around the outside of this to light up the track. But it's just there. It's all separate. And uh, we're going to be doing uh, looking at the Crystal Sound 2 stuff. Now, just so that people know, this level of... Um, uh, onboard audio it's obviously going to be better than the old style but it's never going to be as good as a dedicated sound card but again if you're going to be looking at this kind of board with this kind of price you're not going to be looking at spending you know 130 pounds upwards on a sound card when you've not even spent that much on your motherboard but the fact that that's there any improvement in audio is going to be welcomed at a, this kind of price point now we will talk about this because this is something that we're going to have to cover in more detail when we do the review. Now this is SATA Express. Um, this is 10 gigabits a second, so up from 6 of SATA 3, um, this SATA Express is 10 gigabits a second. And you use all of these connectors as well. I'm pretty sure it's like two SATA connectors and then this other one. Um, I've not looked at the details. I do have a SATA Express product to cover once we've got uh, the boards and stuff looked at. So we will be um, doing that and probably covering it in a lot more depth, but that's something to look out for. The other thing to look out for is the M2 support. M2 support is an onboard mini um, um, uh, solid state drive mount, and it's uh, pretty much directly on to the PCI Express. Uh, this again is 10 gigabits a second, a huge improvement. Uh, we'll see if we get um, uh, devices that actually manage to saturate this. I'm certainly looking forward uh, to getting more and more uh, speed from our operating systems and stuff. But again, we need the um, we need the drives to go with this that are going to be able to use that extra bandwidth. But obviously, it's going to be something that's going to um, uh, evolve with time. So, board-specific features. We've got our eight pin there. Now this says channel fan one. Oh, I love the focus on this camera. It's so much better than my last one. Um, up here we've got what does that say? It says CPU uh, optional one. So that's our main CPU fan up there, as it says. We're sticking with fans at the moment. That says I can't even see it. Channel fan four, and the camera's focusing better than me. Um, we've got another channel fan down there. Looking for another one, there's another channel fan down there. That's channel fan three. And I think that's the lot, unless I'm missing them. I probably am. Um, down the bottom of the board, surprisingly, we've got a power switch. Uh, and there's a little power LED at the top as well. So there's an onboard power switch. That's a lovely little thing. Um, we've got three internal USB 2s, one, two, three. Uh, there is an internal USB 3. Down here we've got the TPU 1 and 2 uh, and that's the turbo processing unit. There's the EPU which is all to do with power saving. Up here we've got the DRAM LED and the uh, MEMO K button but this is something that I've noticed and it's Easy XMP. Now I need to test this but I'm pretty much assuming that you can flick that switch and it bangs it into XMP mode. Now that's going to be brilliant for beginners but I've uh, I've done a video showing how easy it is to be able to set XMP up yourself. So I don't think there's really, and uh, sorry, set your memory manually. So I don't think there's really any excuse. So we have a look at some of the features around here. We've obviously, we've got one, two, three PCI Express uh, 16 slots, but this one is wired 16 and these two are wired eight. Now I'm saying wired, we don't know what the chipset's capable of yet, but that's how they're wired. So I just have to be very critical about that point. If we come round the back of the board, we've got full-size DisplayPort, HDMI, DVI, 
very old 15 pin D sub. Um, if anyone's still running these cables, call cool, blimey Charlie, you need to upgrade your monitor. Uh, two USB 2s, four USB 3s, we have a PS2 port. This, when you're overclocking, can be you know critical, but some gamers obviously still use that, and people may still be using an older monitor. We've got um, a gigabit Ethernet there, and then you've got your HD audio. Now, I'm not seeing any Intel sticker on this, and I'm looking around. I'm just going to look on the box quickly and have a look at the, the networking. Uh, storage VGA, it's actually not telling me LAN audio. LAN. Oh, it's Intel uh, i218V Gigabit LAN. So it is Intel Gigabit LAN. A lot of the time with Asus, they stick a sticker on the top saying Intel Gigabit LAN, but it is Intel. So it's much better than the uh, Killer E2100, which is uh, on a lot of the other boards. Just so that you do know, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, Killer E2100, epic for gaming. It's just a Qualcomm chip and it's actually Killer software. Um, just so that you know. Anyway, so. That's our first look at the Asus Z97A. And don't forget what I said, this is their entry level board. So it's going to be coming in at a very competitive price. I think that there's, this looks quite promising. If you can get past the uh, gold, which I know some people may like, some people may not like, but just to kind of show you that you can, oh, I was going to show you, I can't find the, the gold memory now that you can spec everything up nicely you can easily get gold parts to go with it if you wanted to make uh, a feature of that gold but anyway this is tiny tom logan with his first z97 board first look out